that better? Okay, hallelujah, amen. How good is it to be in the house of the Lord? Amen, amen. Can we have that first, um, yeah, there we go, wonderful. Citizens of heaven. I'm going to read your scripture. It comes out of um, Philippians, as you see there, um, 3 verse 17 to 21. And it's Paul who's writing a, a letter to the Philippians and he's giving them a little bit of advice around... Um, how they should live their life. And it says from verse 17, join together in following my example, brothers and sisters. And just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as I have often told you before, and I now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach. And their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a savior from there. The Lord Jesus Christ. Who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so they will be like his glorious body. So, bless the word of the Lord. So, as we start today, you know, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. And I want you to just relax, open your heart, open your mind, and just hear what the Lord says. We're not here to point out everything we do wrong or everything we need to change. We know that. That's why we're here. We really know that. And that's not the purpose of today. We just want to spend time with our beautiful Jesus and ask him for a bit of wisdom around his word and around this word. And, you know, as a citizenship, I want to use this little example here. So we live this life, and if you're a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, that little red piece there is our life on earth. That's it. And that there, it should be longer, is our life in heaven, eternity. That's what we were made for. We weren't made for this. We were made for this forever, for eternity. That's what we were made for. And that's what Paul is trying to tell us here in this scripture. But you, you see this little piece here, this little section here, is what we focus on. This little section here, and as a matter of fact, the last little bit of it, is where we put all our energy and all our focus. And that's what consumes our life. But we forget that in actual fact, we were made for that. We weren't made for this. So as a citizen of heaven, you've got a passport. It's not like your Australian passport or your Australian driver's license. It's something beyond here. And you have a vote. We're in this world, but we're not of this world, as we've seen here. But many of us believe I've got a ticket to heaven because I've said the sinner's prayer. I asked Jesus into my life and, and I got my ticket to heaven. I'm okay. I don't, I don't need to do more. I don't need to be sold out. I don't need to be more committed. I've got my ticket. But I want to remind you that a ticket is not a passport. It's a ticket. And as Jesus gives us the parable of the wheat in the field. Amongst the wheat is a lot of 
There's wheat on the field, but there's also other things amongst the wheat. There's weeds, but you don't see it. We don't see the weeds amongst the wheat. But one day, when we stand before the ultimate judge, we will know. And so a ticket to heaven is maybe just for one show. And my biggest fear and my fear is, Lord, that I would get to heaven one day. And I would say to you, Father, Father, in your name, I healed the sick, I healed the lame, I drove out demons, I spoke your word. And he says, get away from me because I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't know you. See, there's two kingdoms we're talking about here. There's a kingdom of the world, which is ruled by Satan. And there's a kingdom of God, which is eternal. Satan, Lucifer, whatever the devil you want to call him. Who's he? He's the God of this world. He's the one we used to follow. We were all born into this world. Under him. But we had to make a choice. We had to make a decision. And many don't believe in him. He's no devil. The fact that you don't believe in him doesn't mean he's not going to try and destroy your life. He's not going to try and tempt you and test you. Because he's come to do three things. Steal, kill, and destroy. And I don't like to call him devil because he loves that. He loves the attention. He's a bit of a prima donna. He loves the attention. Because a lot of the world calls him devil. They celebrate him. But there's a, um, a medieval artist. His name is uh, Michael Passion. And he draws this picture, this depiction of Satan with Saint Wolfgang. And what he does is he draws this face on a butt. So I want to refer to him today as butt face. That's who he is. He's not my God. He's not my Lord. And he's not welcome in this place. And he's not welcome in your life and he's not welcome in mine. So we're going to refer to him as Buttface. You see, Buttface hates you. Because he knows where he's going. He knows ultimately where he will go. He doesn't like you. He doesn't want you to be here this morning. He wants to cause division here this morning, as a matter of fact. Who is he? That little red piece. Where we at the moment. That life you're living. The questions that you have. I don't understand why I have to go through this. I don't understand why all these things are happening in my life. I don't understand this infirmity. I don't understand this illness. I don't understand why I feel empty. I don't understand why I feel lost. But face is part of that. And there's a scripture in 1 Peter 5.8. It says, be alert and be sober of mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. You see, he's the perfect counterfeit. We know our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But the devil is also the same. He's the perfect counterfeit. He copies everything that Christ does. He's also the same yesterday, today, and forever. He hasn't changed still wants to destroy your life. But I'll give you a little bit of an analogy on this. A lion. How does a lion hunt? Think of a lion. He doesn't just come out and grab the first antelope or gazelle or buffalo he sees. No. He's sly. That's what Buttface does. 
He's sly. He looks for the weak one. He waits for you. He sits in the background and he waits. And he looks for the weak one. The ones that struggle, the ones that fall behind. And then he comes out and he grabs them. That's what he does. He looks for the weak ones. He doesn't just go out and grab you. He doesn't want you to serve this Jesus. He doesn't want you to love this Lord. But you know, there's another lion. There's another lion. The lion of Judah. Pastor Noah was talking about it last week. Instant. There's another lion. And I want to ask you, when you look at this picture, what do you see? That's our Abba Father. That's our Daddy. And that's you and me, the little lamb. His hand is over you. He's your protector. He's your provider. He's our God. But there's another meaning in this story. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Jesus. And the Word became flesh. And dwelt among us. But that word became a sacrifice. A lamb. A sacrificial offering. Who died. For you. And for me. And took everything upon himself. So as much as he is. The king of all. He became a lamb. And paid the price for you and for me. This is such a cop out for many, many of us. It's been my cop out often. But I'm only human. I'm only human. You're not. There's a part of you that's human. A part of you that's human. The Holy Spirit is not a ghost. The Holy Spirit is not the wind. The Holy Spirit is not a fire. It's been referred to that. The Holy Spirit is all of the power all of the glory, all of the authority, all of the grandeur of God the Father is in the person of the Holy Spirit. And if you are a reborn child of God, and if He is the Lord of your life, that Holy Spirit is in you. So all of the power, all of the glory, All of the authority, all of the grandeur of God the Father is in you. You are not just human. And that's why you can overcome this little life that we live. But you know what happens? We love this life too much. And sometimes we enjoy this life so much So we're not interested in this life. He tells us, in my father's house are many mansions. I'm going to prepare a place for you. I asked God once, I said, Lord, don't let me be too rich that I look away from you, that I think I am God. And don't let me be too poor that I have to steal and I shame your name. Let me just have enough. Let me just have enough. But if you've got Jesus, you've got everything. You've got everything. You've got everything. But never forget who lives in you. 
He's part of the Trinity, the person of the Holy Spirit. He's the third person of the Trinity, not because he's less important, but because that's how he's revealed to us in the Word. He's a person. He lives in you. So no weapon formed against you can prosper. You're a holy nation. You're a called out race. You've got something in you that can overcome every obstacle that you face today. He's in you. Amen. Embrace it. Receive it. But you see, we have a battlefield. It's here. It's in our mind. The battlefield of the mind. But you have the mind of Christ. Yes. And as Paul says, many live as enemies of the cross. We live in fear. It's giving you a spirit of power, of might, sound mind, not of fear. Look deeper. Go deeper. Change your perspective. Start to walk by faith. So you'll see people standing around what I want you to do is look at that picture and just slightly close your eyes just start to squint your close your eyes slightly and look at the picture again what do you see what do you see Jesus we see Jesus he is your Lord he is your King he is your Savior and he will never leave you. And he will never forsake you. Because he lives in you. And no more will the sun or the moon be your light. He will be your light. Because he's your God. Sadly, as I start to close with this, in the church today, many churches... There's a lot of cessationism, not sensationalism, there's a lot of that too, which is probably not very good either. But there's a lot of cessationism. Now, cessationism says that the things that happened before don't happen anymore. There's no more healing, there's no more deliverance, there's no more victory. That's what the churches are preaching. But I want to tell you, I want to share testimony with you this morning. That is a lie from the pit of hell. So about a year and a half ago, I had bilateral knee replacement. Both my knees, same time. And the one was really good. Really good. And the other one was not. A bit like this scenario. Not, not so good. Very good. <laughs> but you know, I came to a place and I went and saw the surgeon and he said, we're going to have to do it again. We're going to have to operate and do your knee again. And I didn't have peace in my heart about it. I didn't have peace about it. And then I felt, but who lives in me? Who's my God? Who's my Lord? Yes. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in this world. Nothing is impossible for him. I'm like a youth that came out of the Toyota factory. I go back to the Toyota factory. I don't go to the Mazda factory. I stay in the Toyota factory. Because he knows me. And I used to wear a knee guard and take medication. And I know it's impossible to please God without faith. And I thought, Lord, I've got faith. And I felt God say there's two kinds of faith. There's faith, and then there's like suicidal faith. Which is not that you want to kill yourself. But that you are willing to die for what you believe. You will go beyond just a thought. 
I said, right, Lord. I took everything off. Took the new God off. Stopped the medication. And he healed me. He healed me. He touched this knee and he healed me. It's actually better than the other one now. And that is what our Lord does. And why? Because the grandeur of God the Father lives in you. He's in you. You're not only human. And I share that with you this morning. And could we have the musicians, please? And what I want you to do this morning is maybe, maybe take that little step of faith, that suicidal faith. And I'm not saying stop your medication, go off your medication. That, that's fine. Because you have a, a human side to you, and your medical practitioner maybe gives you something for that. But, but just remember there's another side to you. There's something else in you as well that has the blueprint for your life. And this morning as we, we come in prayer, before we sing, turn your eyes upon Jesus, because that's all you've got to do. <laughs> Just turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And if God can do it for me, he can do it for you. He wants to do it for you, but he wants you to jump. He wants you to jump. You see, we, we come to the edge and we have a look and we're like, oh, you know, I, I'm afraid. And I, no. You've got to jump. You just got to focus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and jump. And he will catch you. And he will lift you up on wings of an eagle. And he will take you to the heights. And maybe this morning you have an infirmity in your body like I had, my knee. Or maybe it's something, a battle in the mind. Or maybe it's unforgiveness that you maybe have towards someone or a relationship or something. And we're going to pray now. I'm not going to call anyone up. I'm not going to do that. See, this is between you and God. It's between you and Him. He knows you. He says, I've seen you in the stillness of the morning. I've heard your cry in the middle of the night. And I will not leave you and I will not forsake you because you are mine. I paid for you with a dear price. And we just celebrated that sacrament today. The body of Christ that was broken for you to take away everything that you deal with. He hung on that cross and he said, it is in his blood, the new covenant in his blood which washes over you and gives us that future of hope so with every eye closed and every head bowed if I may ask you let's just be still and come before our Lord now Father, 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 Abba, Father. Beginning and great I am, Alpha and Omega. The one who was and is and is to come. We come before you humbly this morning as your children. And come and lay our concerns at the foot of the cross. Father, thank you for the revelation that you gave us this morning that there's something in us that is greater than that that is in this world. 
and thank you for the assurance to know that we are citizens of the kingdom of heaven. This is not our home. And thank you, Father, that we know that we don't need to be entrapped by the material blessings of this world. We don't need to be held captive because all that spirit wants that lives in us is your word, the living waters that flow from the throne. And so this morning, maybe you have a ticket which will get you to the banquet. But it might only be for one show. And maybe you say, I don't just want the ticket. I want the citizenship. I want the passport. I want to know that I'm a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. And if that's you, I'm not going to ask you to do anything. You, you know if that's you. And just quietly as you sit there, maybe you can just pray something like this. Jesus, I know of you, but I don't really know you. I want to know you. I want to know you intimately. I want to know you personally. I've been living this life in that little red zone. But I want to know for sure that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Will you come and touch me this morning? I come and I commit my life to you. I open my heart and I ask you to come in. And, and I don't quite understand all of this, but, but I know, I feel something because I know and I've heard that I've been created in your image and in your likeness. And I know that you love me and you paid a price for me. So will you come into my life this morning? And will you touch me? Will you touch me? But I want you to take that step of faith. And, and now that you've done that prayer, know that it's instant. It's like the thief on the cross. It's instant. You will be with me in paradise today. It's instant. So what I want you to do is to take your hand and all eyes closed. No one look around, please. And put your hand on your heart. And then your other hand, you take and put it wherever on your body where you have this infirmity, where you have pain. Could be a knee, could be an elbow. If there's lots of places, we'll move your hand around. Or it could be your mind. And just place that hand there and say, Father God, I'm going to exercise that suicidal faith today. I'm going to exercise that suicidal faith today. And I'm going to trust you and believe you for a healing right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Because if you can do it for that buffet standing up there, you can do it for me. You can do it for me. faithful God that you inhabit the praises of your people that you say if you ask you will receive and if you seek you will find and if you knock I will open the door and we walk by faith not by sight and we receive that healing now we receive that deliverance now we receive that touch now in the name of Jesus quietly in your spirit just look to heaven and say open the eyes of my heart Lord because I want to see you I want to see Jesus and then turn your eyes upon Jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim 
in the light of his glory and grace and as we sing this together let it not just be a song let it not just be something you utter let it be something you believe let it be a prayer and turn your eyes upon Jesus and look to heaven and look into his face and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace so let's stand and let's honor our God let's honor our King and let's do that Thank you, Lord, for the healing in this place today. Thank you, Father God, for the touch of heaven in this place today. Thank you, Father God, that we will leave here with something we never arrived with. Thank you, Father. And but face, you will not steal. You will not come and steal what God has given today. You will not steal the harvest. We declare you powerless. I declare you powerless over each and every single person. We speak the name of Jesus and the blood over every blessing, revelation here today. And so as you leave this place, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. And may he give you that unending joy and peace. And as we close, I speak this blessing over you. Baruch. Shem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. of my heart I want to see you I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to the power and love as we sing holy holy to see to see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 holy
I want to see you holy, 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 hol